So we'll go through from the, the very beginning, I guess, since, you know, I kind of talk about it now. So I had a breast cancer diagnosis and, and before that I was in really good shape. And then I got my diagnosis, went through a whirlwind of surgeries and treatments and everything and thought I would just pop right back to where I would be before my diagnosis and then had this sharp realization that that wasn't going to happen and began to spiral into this, I don't know, very negative place, very frustrated, very unhappy, very, you know, kind of despondent. I was still working out. I was still, you know, doing all the things that, that I do, which, you know, I would work out every day. I would eat right. I would do all those kind of things. I got my weight back down where it needed to be but I wasn't seeing the progress that I wanted and I was stalled and I was frustrated by the surgeries that I had and my reduced mobility, lack of strength, and then just the general toll mentally and physically, I guess, that the whole, the whole year had had on me. So that's when I showed up here. And then real, and then I think really the, my own self-realization that I needed help, you know, being Having the background, my degrees in, in exercise science and everything like that, I, I always equate it to like, you know, a, a physician doesn't go to, doesn't treat themselves. You know, they go to a doctor. So, you know, the first thing I was like, I need to find somebody to, to help me. And, and that was, I needed to find, you know, an exercise professional to help me. And so that's what got me here. It was very hard. I think I knew that I needed it. I think, I, I mean, I, th I, I think it would, there was a long period before I got here that I knew I needed it. But there was also a long period where I tried to do it myself, you know, because I figured I'd always done it myself before, so why can't I do it now? And then there, we had built a house, we had moved, and I was unable to help like I had in the past. I mean, I physically just didn't have the strength. I couldn't do it. I couldn't help my husband hang up a TV. Oh, I couldn't hold a TV. You know, I couldn't, and the TVs aren't heavy. I mean, they aren't heavy like they were, you know, in the past. I just, I physically could not pick it up and, and help him do it. And I couldn't push a refrigerator, you know, into a room. So the little, little functional day-to-day -day movements that I had been able to do in the past, I couldn't do. And, you know, everybody had been like patting me on the back, like, oh, you ran through chemo and oh, you did this and oh, you did. I'm like, yeah, but I can't do functional day to day movements anymore. And so that's, that was really when I was like, okay, I can't, this is only going to get worse. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can't do it anymore. And then I kind of lived in a closet too, like with my diagnosis, like, you know, I don't want anybody to know. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to be that person. I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me. And I really felt I needed to, having, you know, directed the race series, having, you know, been part of a, a master swim team, having been, you know, in the fitness community, I needed to step into a whole new environment. I needed to go somewhere where nobody knew me, you know? So there were no, no nobody knew who I was before. There was no like, oh my gosh, that's so terrible. There was sympathy, you know, and, and a little bit of empathy, but there was no, okay, we knew where you were and oh my gosh, this is so terrible because it really wasn't that terrible. It was just, here's where you are, here's where we need to get to and here's how we're gonna do it. Well, it's brought a lot of, I think, peace to our house. And it's brought a lot of realization that what happens to one person happens to everybody, not just um, that, that one person, you know, in your, in your house. So by being able to sit with her and talk with her and work with her, and she gives me the tools to be able to better communicate, but also better process and not, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, fly off the handle at everything, not get so worked up about everything before you take those, you know, five to 10 minutes to go through. It's almost like a little 10 step, you know, program to like, Okay, let's stop. Let's take a minute. You know, why are we reacting this way? Do you need to react this way? Let's, ra you know, like I rank it. I go through like, you know, just a process to, to try to figure out where my mind is, why I'm responding the way I am, why somebody else is responding the way they are. 
who needs to be, you know, do we have to own it all? Do we have to do it this way? And so it has ultimately brought a bigger sense of peace and tranquility, I think, in my entire house. So we're not, we're not always button heads. We're not always battling the small things. And even the bigger things we're able to like kind of sit and have a, a conversation about. Now I just, I, now, I mean, I feel good. I hate to use the word normal. I don't want to use normal. It's a different, it's a different normal. I've found, you know, I tell Ray all the time, strength training. I learned strength training in school, obviously, but it's never been something that I've really loved to do. And so I found some enjoyment in it. I do enjoy it almost more than as much as I enjoy my running and swimming. Ooh, you know, so I'm getting there. Say that? I did. I did. I'm getting there. You know, like she, I told her the other day, you know, like, you know, learning the learning the hows and the whys and, and all that kind of stuff and, and being able to learn how much and stuff like that. And she's trying to push us into a little bit of the more competitive part of it, because I think she thinks knowing all the competitive things that we have done, that if we can get to that, then we'll like it even more, you know? So she's not real sure. Like she's starting with that Murph thing in May. Like she's like, I think you need to start here. I think you need to do this. Then we'll try this. They have masters things and this, that, and the other. And so it is, it's, it's enjoyable to have, to have him here. And he's got, I mean, he's got some, some, you know, physical limitations and stuff like that. And she's done numbers for him, like to be able to squat and get back to doing some things that he needed to, to do and they told him that he was never going to be able to do again and wow. that he can do now yeah. so wow. and he was talking about that that his back feels better than it has in you wow. know 10 years so so yeah so that's been it's been it's been really good for him and he's enjoyed I mean, he hasn't picked up a free weight in 15 years wow. so awesome. it's been good awesome. i think that everybody Everybody needs to incorporate strength training. I mean, I've preached it, even though I didn't always do it, I always preached it. But, you know, one of the, one of the reasons that somebody steered me here and, and it is because CrossFit can sometimes be intimidating. It is very intimidating for some people. And a friend of mine that ran a CrossFit program, I don't know how he knew about here in Austin and now he's in Atlanta, kind of sent me this way because he said, Yes, it's, it's got the CrossFit principles, but it doesn't have some of the intimidating aspects that we sometimes can run into with CrossFit. And so that's one thing that I would, anybody who's on the fence, you know, whether they decide to stay, whatever, I think that this is kind of, what's kind of what I call it. It's like, it's like the low key version. You know, you can do as much or as little as you want and you aren't intimidated by the people that do more you know because there's always there's always going to be no matter where you go there's always somebody that's going to be doing more you know and that's i think the one reason and that's what pe keeps people from coming in you know whether it's here whether it's a gym whether it's anywhere it's that fear of how they are going to appear to others when somebody else is doing more than they can do and that here i'm like that isn't even remotely a concern. So I think it's a it's a very good environment for people of all ages. That's the one thing that really, really, really has surprised me and has been enjoyable is that, I mean, there are people from 20 to 70. I mean, the age range, and that's, I mean, you know, to see somebody who's like, you know, 70, 80 years old in here is like, okay, that's, that's where I wanna be at 70, 80 years old, you know? And then, you know, everybody lifts different weight. Most, I mean, unless you're really good at math, you have no idea what anybody's lifting. <laughs> I mean, I can't even calculate what I lift. I'm like, so there, I'm like, wait a minute, because you have your phone, I gotta like do the math. I'm like, how much is this bar again? You know, so I was like, you know, nobody's paying any attention to what anybody's doing. So I really, really think for like, you know, from a mental aspect and a physical aspect, and, and since everything that I've gone through, it's become so much more into my, the forefront of my um, radar. And then, you know, when I go to the doctor and tell everybody is that, you know, older women, especially that kind of put this on the back burner and everything really, really, really need to take a minute and spend some time and this is a good, good program, you know, for them as well. And, and, you know, the mental aspect as well, because as we get older, you know, 
The mindset training is very, very good as, as we start going through some things as we get older and it, you know, we don't really know why we're feeling the way we do. And Melinda's good at helping you work through that. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think it's, it's excellent.